second sutra of brahma sutra the first sutra was athato brahma jignasa atha ataha brahma jignasa this was the first sutra but atha means thereafter thereafter means what sadhana chatushte sampatyanantaram after acquiring the sadhana chatushtaya, acquiring the fourfold qualifications, viveka, vairagya, samadhi, chitka, sampattihi, mumukshutva. So, these are the four famous qualifications prescribed by Bhagavan Adi Shankaracharya and subsequent teachers as a pr preparation required to gain the knowledge and gain the abidance in knowledge as well. That is what is referred to Atha in the first sutra. Ataha therefore, because uh, the scriptures say that knowing Brahman one attains the ultimate goal of life. Brahma with Apnodi Param. Upanishad says, Brahma with the knower of Brahman, Aapnodi Param attains Param, attains limitless. Here attaining means becoming really or discovering. Brahma with the knower of Brahma, Aapnodi attains, discovers Param, the supreme, the limitless. Again, that is Brahman. Meaning that knower of Brahman discovers oneself to be Brahman. <coughs> Meaning that to be Brahman, to be limitless. All one need to do is to recognize that one is Brahman or one is limitless already. And does Brahman or limitless have any relevance in our life? Very much so. 
Because what each one of us is seeking is to be free. And free from every form of limitation. Limitation we may experience in terms of lack of wealth, lack of prestige, lack of fame, name, power. Lack of friends, relatives, spouse, children, whatever variety of lack we experience. And we are not comfortable with a lacking self. And therefore, each one of us wants to become free from the lack, the lacking self that we experience. And therefore, knowing Brahman, becoming Brahman, becoming limitless, or discovering the self to be limitless is the most important in our life. Because discovering oneself with Brahman, discovering oneself with limitless, means recognizing that one is free from all limitations. Something that I always wanted to be, which I have been struggling for the whole of my life, not only in this life, but I am sure from the time beginning less, that I have been struggling to become free from limitations. And this knowledge, the Brahma Vidya, the knowledge of Brahman, enables me to recognize that freedom that I am seeking is my own nature. Meaning that, knowing Brahman, I find myself free from all limitations. I achieve what I have always been seeking. Therefore, knowing Brahman attains the goal of life, you may say. So, this is so. Therefore, knowing Brahman is the most important thing in my life. Although, to recognize that, does call for a maturity, which is what is indicated by sadhana, chatushya, sampatti. That viveka, vairagya, this sampatti. This inner wealth of virtues, Using that maturity to recognize that what I am seeking is freedom, I am seeking is Brahman. And that Brahman can be attained only by knowing Brahman. Asa, ataha, since this is so, therefore, Brahma Jignasa, the knowledge of Brahman becomes the most important thing to me. Therefore, the jignasa, the desire to know Brahman arises in me when I recognize that knowing Brahman is a means of fulfilling the goal of my life. Therefore, the jignasa, the desire to know, transforms itself into the means of knowing Meaning, approaching the teacher, Shravanam, listening to the Upanishads at the feet of the teacher, Mananam, reflection upon what it is that I listen to, Lidhyasanam, deep meditation and absorption, assimilation of what it is that I have listened to and understood. So, this is called Vicharaha. So, Brahma Jignasa, Brahma Vichara, Kartavya, one should undertake the Vichara. The deliberation upon Brahman, the form of Sharvanam, listening to the teacher. Mananam, reflection upon what it is that I learn from Sharvanam. This is Dhyasaram, assimilating what it is that I now know. Athato, Brahma Jignasa, the Jignasa is then. Explained as vichara, brahm vichara, kartavya. Therefore, a vichara, a deliberation upon Brahman must be carried out. 
because vichara gives rise to knowledge and knowledge is the means of what it is that I want to accomplish in my life. So this was the gist of the first sutra, Athato Brahma Jignasa. Then the question arises, Kim Tad Brahma? What is the nature of Brahman which I desire to know? Brahman, upon which I should carry out that vichara or deliberation, kim tad brahma, kim lakshanam tad brahma. What is the lakshanam? The characteristic of that Brahman. <coughs> lakshanam means a unique characteristic which distinguishes a given thing from everything else. So what is the distinguishing characteristic of Brahman? <coughs> That question naturally arises when the first sutra says that by having recognized that the importance or unavoidability of knowledge of Brahman, one must proceed to do what is required to know Brahman and for that one should carry out which are of the deliberation of Brahman under the guidance of a competent teacher. <coughs> Therefore, the question arises, what is the nature of Brahman about which the vichara is to perform? Therefore, the second sutra answers that question. <coughs> so, first sutra, Athato Brahma Jignasa, raises a question in me, what is that Brahman? What is the nature of that Brahman? What is the Lakshana characteristic of Brahman? And second sutra proceeds to answer that question. <coughs> Although here the Tikagara says, Kim Lakshanam Brahman, Brahman cannot be, Brahman doesn't have a Lakshanam, you know. So there is Akshepa or questioning whether Brahman is there or not. The Akshepa Sangati, a question, uh, can there be Brahman? Is there something called Brahman? Can, does it have any Lakshanam? Does it have any characteristic? And second, the Sutra answers that. <coughs> or we can simply connect the two. Athato Brahma Jignasa. Thereafter then, there is this jignasa or deliberation which are upon Brahman to gain knowledge of Brahman. And therefore, the immediate question is, what is the nature of Brahman? The second sutra answers that question. Janmad yasyataha. The sutras are very compact. Like capsules. That is the definition of sutra. Alpaksharam, asandigdham, saravat, vishvatomukham. Alpaksharam, containing fewest possible words. Asandigdham, leaving no doubt whatever in one's mind. Saravat, a pity statement. Vishwatomukham and can have uh, more than perhaps one dimension. Of course, when you say it only a few words, it may uh, not be clear, it says no. Asandigdham, there is no doubt left here. <coughs> so that is sutra, and so second sutra is Janma Adhyasyataha. Janmadhyasya, Janmadi, Asya, Yataha, three words. First sutra also had three words, Atha, Ataha, Brahma Jignasa. Second sutra also has three words, <coughs> Janmadi, Asya, Yataha. Janmadi, Janma means birth or creation. 
Adi, etc. So the etc. should include what is compatible to Janma or creation, and therefore Janma Adi, Janma etc. Creation etc. means creation, sustenance, dissolution. Sometimes they say creation, sustenance, destruction. Rather destruction, we should say dissolution. In this scheme of things, nothing ever gets destroyed. A part gets destroyed. Even part breaks down. But then, it becomes clay, it as though merges into clay, which is its cause. And so, destruction of part is resolving the part into its cause, that is clay. <coughs> Therefore, creation, sustenance, dissolution. <coughs> That's how the cycle is, creation, sustenance, dissolution. This is a cyclic creation. And perhaps everything in the universe is cyclic. Like it rains, and then the water gets evaporated, forms new clouds, rains again. That's how the cycle goes on. Similarly, creation, sustenance, dissolution. <coughs> Janmadi, this is how the universe is. The Vedantins explain to us this this universe is a cyclic phenomenon undergoing countless cycles. We cannot trace the beginning of the universe. We cannot trace the beginning of anything. Suppose you try to trace the beginning of this part. We can say that before the part was created, what was there was clay. But then clay also is the product of something. Clay also is made up of various molecules. And molecules are made of various atoms. Atoms are made of various subatomic particles. So at every stage, it is an assembly consisting of various components or ingredients. An assembly resolves into its ingredients. An ingredient is another assembly which resolves its ingredients. And this is how this whole process of resolving, resolving, resolving. But apparently you cannot arrive at what is the most fundamental particle. <coughs> Although that is not quite the question that is uh, the matter of this Brahma Sutra, but it says Janmadi, the creation, sustenance, dissolution of Asya Jagataha of this universe, Yataha, from which Janmadi, Asya Yataha, Janmadi, creation, etc., creation, sustenance, dissolution. Asya, of this, of this, this universe that is before us. And we observe the universe. It is the most mind boggling uh, system. The universe is something that is cannot be understood in its totality. Even great scientist Einstein said, the universe is like a clock. What we see are the hands of the clock. But we do not see the mechanism. Similarly, this universe 
Shankaracharya Bhashyakara explains is the most amazing, most mind-boggling creation. Wherever we see, wherever we look into the smallest of the atom, then also we find that it's a fantastic uh, system. And you look at the great galaxies, another fantastic system. In between, wherever you look, look at a flower, look at a leaf, and you always wonder. Our Puja Swam used to say, this flower has seven petals. Good. It's, it's a rose having a red color. Yes. But why is it red? I don't know. Why does it have seven petals? I don't know. No, I am ignorant about this thing. There could be a more informed person in my place who is the botanist and maybe will tell us why the color is what and maybe be able to explain why so many, this number of petals are there. But then you would ask a few more questions and ultimately we find that our knowledge is confined to one more question, why? I can answer three questions. You can answer four questions. An expert can answer seven questions. A genius can answer ten questions. But nobody can answer the question, why, why, why? We need not get frustrated by that. We did not get disappointed by that. It's a fascinating creation. It shows that it is the work of someone who is omniscient, all-knowing. Because everything in the universe also is in some way connected to everything else. And therefore, we cannot understand any simple thing also in its totality <coughs> unless we understand the whole universe. We cannot understand the universe unless we understand the individual units. The individual unit making the universe requires me to understand the whole universe. The whole universe requires me to understand the unit. And therefore, it is not possible to know anything in its totality. Someone said that a given cell in a certain animal in Australia, if a number of scientists keep on working a number of years on one cell, then also they will not arrive at the final understanding or conclusion, which is, which is all right, not frustrating which is wonderful. I mean, this is the most amazing creation, most fascinating creation. So scientists are always fascinated, not frustrated. And that leads them to uh, inquire, you know, more and more in greater and greater detail. So there are those who keep awake at night and watch the show going on at night. <coughs> the sky, there are those who use their very sophisticated microscope to see what's going on at a very small level, minute level. There are others who try to understand what we perceive through our sense organs. And everybody is, anybody who's curious to know is always engaged in inquiry. The point is, it is the most fascinating and mind-boggling universe, which means that it is the creation. It is the creation of the all omniscient Ishvara. Omniscient means one who knows everything. 
Om Nishim means also knowing past, present and future. Om Nishim means knowing everything. This part, for example, we know what this part is, we can measure what the height is, what the width is, what the volume is, etc., etc., and we will have some knowledge about the part. But not who made the part, when was it made, how was it made, even that you may discover or you may inquire. How long will it last? There can be million questions about one simple little thing as a part. And there were even entity called a part also cannot be known in its entirety. <coughs> Nothing in the universe when a particle also cannot be known in its entirety. Anything that is separate from me, I can only know the part. I cannot know it in totality. I do not know the whole. Which is fine. The point is that that shows that the universe is a creation of the omniscient, all knowing. Also, we see in the universe such powerful entities as the sun and the moon and the planets and the galaxies and all of these are all functioning in a very harmonious way. There may be many phenomena in the universe which you don't understand. You call them accidents, etc. But ultimately, we will find out that everything functions according to some rule which we may know or may not know. That means there is a grand universal order which seems to inform everything that's in the universe. And therefore, universe is an intelligent, meaningful creation, a systematic creation, useful creation and the one who has created the universe must therefore be all-knowing omniscient sarvajna <coughs> and to keep the whole universe galaxy in control someone must make sure that all these very powerful forces also function in harmony with each other. So the function according to rule. And therefore we can make a general statement. There is no such thing as an accident in the universe. Maybe there may be a phenomenon which you don't understand, which we may call it accident. That's only pending the understanding of the reasons why that phenomenon occurred. There is no accident. There is reason for everything that happens. We may not know the reason. And therefore, it is a creation by one who understands, who has established the order, who makes sure that everything in the creation follows that order. In such power, including such powerful entities as the sun and the moon and the wind and the earth and water and galaxies, he must be all-powerful. Sarvagnya, Sarvashaktiman, Sarvagnya, all-knowing. Sarvashaktiman, all-powerful. So this universe reveals a maker of the universe. This universe is also called creation. And creation cannot be without the creator. Nothing happens by accident, nothing happens on its own. This part also does not get formed on its own. When you see the part, then you know that there must be a part maker. A small entity such as a part 
requires at least two causes to create. One cause which we call upadana karana material cause. Other is the nimitta karana efficient cause. In case of this little part, which is made of clay, the clay is the material cause, upadana karana. And we know that it has been made by a potter, a pot maker, with the help of maybe a potter's wheel and many other things. All that is called nimitta karanam. Upadana karanam, nimitta karanam. The clay from which the pot is made is called upadana karanam, material cause. And the pot maker is the efficient cause who also takes the help of a potter's wheel and various other things. Nimitta karan. Meaning that any creation calls for at least two causes upadana karanam and nimitta karanam. Of this, the upadana karanam namely clay is the insension and the nimitta karanam such as the pot maker is a sentient entity, a conscious entity, an intelligent entity who must have knowledge of how to make the pot, who has the capability of making that pot. So pot maker is called nimitta karanam, the efficient cause the intelligent cause who must have the knowledge, jnanam and shakti, the capability of making even such a thing as part. And second cause is the upadana karanam, the clay, which is invariably achetanam or insentient. The upadana karanam, such as clay, is achetanam, and the nimitta karanam, such as pot maker, is always chetanam. <coughs> See, all of this is mentioned to you because this is what Vashyakara mentions in his Vashya. To make a point that Sankhyas uh, say that pradhanam achetanam is the karanam cause. The Vaisheshikas may say that atoms are the cause, but the cause must necessarily be true, efficient and material. Therefore, an intelligent entity, a conscious entity must have created this universe just as an intelligent conscious entity says pot maker has made this pot, so also an intelligent, conscious entity whom we call Ishwara Brahman has created the universe. Universe is the creation. But Swamiji, how do you say universe is a creation? Because everything that is in the universe serves a purpose. Nothing in the universe is redundant. Everything has its own place, its own contribution, its own function. That means that it is created by someone who has the knowledge, who has the intelligence. And therefore, the creator must be an intelligent entity <coughs> who knows everything in the creation who knows how everything is interconnected to everything else, how everything is interdependent upon everything else, how everything serves the purpose, how everything has a contribution in the scheme of things, how the whole universe runs because of the, the total contribution of all the entities that comprise this universe. So there must be a creator. It cannot be the universe just came into being. 
उदरासमूह से स्वभाव वस्तु प्रवर्तित है इस नेचर ऑफ थिंग जस्ट टू हैपन विदान दैट इज़ नॉट एक्सेप्ट एन एंटीडी एन इंसेंशन एंटीज़ आर जस्ट क्ले कैन नॉट डिस कैन नॉट हैव द इंटेलिजेंस टू मेक अ चॉइस एंड अंडरस्टैंड और डिसाइड व्हाट द नेक्स्ट टाइम विल बी that choice must be made by an intelligent conscious entity although we don't see that therefore maybe there may be someone who will not accept something that he or she doesn't see but intelligence is not something to be seen by our sense organs or by the mind that intelligence happens to be our own nature it doesn't need to be seen It happens to be our own self. <coughs> so that is Ishvara, the Creator, who must be omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent, all-powerful, who must have created the universe, who creates, sustains, and dissolves. But why doesn't Swamiji universe go on and on and on? It is the nature of everything in universe that it departs from here when it is served the purpose. The thing is perpetual. That's the scheme of things in nature. The nature discards what has served its purpose. And its place is taken up by something new, and that's how there is always uh, create sustenance, creation, destruction going on. Something new is always coming up. There is always a wondrous creation because there is no dullness. There is no uh, uh, mechanicalness. is always intelligent always exciting for those who see for those who pay attention <coughs> so janmadi asya yatah second sutra we are discussing asya jagatah janmadi yatah yatah is the fifth case of the pronoun yat which means yatah from which asya sixth case of this evident jagat the jagat of the universe that's in front of me of this jagat yatah from which cause is janmadi the creation sustenance dissolution is brahman <coughs> so that is to be added here that is to be supplied जन्मादि अस्यतः देन यू कैन से इन पेरेंटेसिस तद् ब्रह्मा बिकॉज़ इट्स अंडरस्टूड बिकॉज़ द डिस्कशन स्टार्टेड विद अथातो ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा नाउ द इंक्वायरी डेलिबरेशन अपॉन ब्रह्मन सो नीड नॉट रिपीट दैट वर्ड इट इज इंप्लाइड व्हाट इज दैट ब्रह्मन जन्मादि अस्यतः ब्रह्मन इज दैट from which is the janmadi the creation sustenance dissolution of this evident universe <coughs> so this is the basis of the vedantic teaching the teaching that accepts the existence of ishvara it begins with ishvara understand the brahma sutra begins brahman or ishvara brahman alone in his role of a creator sustainer dissolver is called ishvara not that ishvara is different and brahman is different brahman the role of creator is called brahma its role of sustain is called vishnu its role called destroy is called rudra 
because you see the process of creation, sustenance, dissolution constantly going on. Something comes and goes, comes and goes. That is a creation, sustenance, dissolution. In way we cannot even separate the three. We cannot determine where the creation ends and sustenance begins and the dissolution sustains and the dissolution. We can't really determine what. It, so, this is an ongoing con continuous process. But we know that something is there. It's not there after a while, so it was created, it was there, it's gone. This is how the process of creation, sustenance, dissolution is constantly going on in the universe. It cannot go on by itself. Perhaps the scientists would think that it's going on by itself. The matter itself has intelligence to determine. creation, sustenance, dissolution. But yes, we accept the intelligence. We do not say that intelligence is the property of matter. Intelligence cannot be the property of something that is insentient like matter. It must be the attribute of a conscious being. So, we call it conscious being is Ishwara. By being, although we do not mean that it's an individual with uh, some description or something. Intelligence is a principle. Consciousness is a principle. All pervasive, all inclusive, ever present, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. And it cannot become the object of our senses. It cannot become the object of knowledge. We cannot objectify with our sense organs. We cannot objectify it with our mind. But Swamiji, how do you say it is Ishwara is there? Has somebody seen Ishwara? Can you ever see Ishwara? What is the proof that there is Ishwara? Vedantin will simply ask this question. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, Swami. What is the proof? I know I am there. How do you know? Because the fact that I am is a self-existing, self-revealing fact. Thank God that to know I am does not require me to think, to, to touch, to scratch. I am is the self-existing, self-revealing fact. <coughs> that is Ishvara, that is Atma, that is Ishvara, that is Brahman. <coughs> <coughs> Therefore, is there a proof that there is Brahman? Is there a proof that there is Ishvara? Yes. That you are there? I am there, the universe is there, that which imparts the existence to you and I and whatever there is. And we are also intelligent entities, that which imparts existence and intelligence. We see the universe is a dynamic creation, everything is dynamic provides the dynamism, provides the activity, satta and sfurti, that which provides satta, existence, sfurti, intelligence and dynamism. Although this part may look like it is inert and not moving, but yet it can, there are countless atoms and subatomic particles which are constantly in motion. Everything is motion, is in motion. <coughs> Thus, this universe, which is made up of the countless components, each serving a purpose, each having a contribution, each one is all interdependent upon everything else. 
which is uh, which serves an intelligent purpose which has a contribution in the whole scheme of things without which the universe would be incomplete is the most amazing and mind boggling thing more we think we more we wonder about the greatness of ishwara janmad jasya tha so this scripture got brahma sutra begins with the discussion on ishwara later on will tell us but then the question will arise where is the ishwara is in the heaven swarga down below patala answer will be given tattvamasi that ishwara is none other than you <coughs> the first discussion on tat ishwara brahman the cause of creation but that's what we experience every day that's what our mind always wants to know what is it that i'm interacting with we are constantly interacting with the universe and if we do not know what we are interacting with how can we intelligently uh, relate to the things and we are not able to but we know very well that more we understand a thing more intelligently we can relate to that and there for discussion upon ishwara the fundamental reality of the universe which will reveal ultimately as fundamental reality about you and i the fundamental reality and that is what every seeker wants to know every scientist wants to know what is satyam reality is called satyam what is satyam what is the truth and we accept there must be satyam at so upanishad says satyam jnanam anantam brahma the sutra that we are discussing janma jasyatah presents brahman as jagat karanam as cause of creation somebody say what is this sutra janma jasyatah you promise us to reveal the nature of brahman kim tat brahma what's the nature of brahman athato brahma jignasa now a deliberation upon brahman what's the nature of brahman then you say that from which is the creation sustenance dissolution of universe that is the cause of the universe but where is brahman in here here see the way the nature of brahman is described brahman doesn't come anywhere you know kim tat brahma janma adyasya tat that from which is the creation sustenance dissolution of this universe but we want to know brahman <coughs> so brahman here is explained to us with reference to the universe that we are experiencing then look at the universe it is a creation and therefore there must be creator again look at the universe it is going on constantly in a very intelligent manner so there must be someone that sustains it we also see that whatever is created and created ultimately departs having served the purpose so this is dissolution creation sustains dissolution and that's how this sutra explains brahman or ishvara with reference to jagat or creation when you promise that athato brahma jignasana we will now perform a vichara or deliberation on brahman so we ask to what is kim tat brahma what is that brahman 
and then you tell us that from which the creation, sustenance, division of the universe is. But what is Brahman? You know, you're talking about universe, not Brahman. We're not talking about universe, we're talking the cause of the universe. Meaning that the second sutra presents Brahman or Ishvara or the reality as the very cause of the universe. And cause, as I said, is twofold. One is called the material cause, just as clay in case of this part. Other is called the intelligent cause, such as the part maker in case of this part. Anything that is made like a chapati must have material and the maker. So material and maker together becomes the cause of the universe. But interesting thing here is Janmadi Asya Yataha. The Yataha is the singular. That one which is the cause of the universe, the, sustain, the creation, sustenance, design of the universe. That one which is the cause of the creation, sustenance, dissolution. So, we would expect the Upanishad to tell us what are the two causes, the, because causes are always two. The material cause and the efficient cause. Material cause such as clay which is insentient. Efficient cause such as pot maker who is an intelligent sentient entity. But here we are told Yataha that from which is the creation, sustenance, dissolution. Therefore, that means the sutra or the aphorism suggests there is only one cause, meaning that the efficient and intelligent cause, the material and intelligent, sorry, the material and intelligent cause, the upadana and the nimitta karan are one, not two. So this is the uniqueness of Vedanta. Every other sampradaya looks upon Ishvara, the creator, as someone different from the universe. And they give a location to that Ishvara, maybe heaven or some place. Vedanta says that <coughs> The material, the maker and material, are, the material is not different from the maker. The creation is not separate from the creator. That the maker and material are one. The upadana and nimitta karam, the material and efficient causes are one. But Swami, you just yourself say it. The Upadana Karanam is always insentient. And Nimitta Karanam, efficient cause, always sentient. How can sentient and insentient be one? Vedanta has to so. That means that there is something more fundamental to sentient and insentient. Sentient is what we see. Insentient is what we see. But when we are told that there is only one cause of the universe, that means that both the sentient as well as the insentient must have its source in one. Just as the scientists are wondering whether fundamental matter is particle or wave, sometimes the matter seems to behave as a particle, sometimes uh, it seems to behave like a wave. So is it particle or wave? It was something more fundamental. Of which particle and wave are manifestations. Similarly also Yataha, the Rishvara, that Brahman from which is the creation, sustenance, dissolution of the universe must be that of which the efficient cause a material cause are both manifestations. Who is more fundamental than the efficient cause and material cause? The Upadana Karanam and the Nimitta Karanam.
both of the manifestations of whom that is Ishvara. That everything ultimately dissolves into one non-dual Ishvara. So you say non-dual? Yeah, because the material is not different from the maker here. Usual in usual model of the part, the maker and material are different. And that's how all the sampradayas look upon Ishvara as a maker, different from the universe that is created. Vedanta says, no, there's no duality. The maker is not the ultimate reality. The material is not the ultimate reality. The maker and material, both of them resolve into an ultimate reality. Because Satyam, Jnanam, Anantam, Brahma. Is truth, consciousness, intelligence, infinite, called Brahma. So this is how the Brahma Sutra begins and gives us a certain insight or a little uh, idea about what Upanishads are all about. <coughs> And thus, the second sutra says, Janma Adhyasyataha Tad Brahma. Brahman is that from which the Janma, creation, sustenance, dissolution. Meaning that, that Brahman is both the maker and the material, creator and the creation, the Nimitta and Upadhanam, the intelligent and the material causes. Both of them resolve into one. If they are true, that's called dvaitam or duality. It's called non-duality. Where there are no two separate causes. So where the upadana karanam and nimitta karanam. Both of them resolve into one. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the seventh chapter, Lord Krishna says, Matta phartaram nanyat kinchi dasti dhananjaya. He dhananjaya. He Arjuna. Matta Parataram Kinchin Nasti. There is nothing other than me. Inferior to me, superior to me, other than me. All there is, is I. That's what Lord Krishna says. All there is, is Lord Krishna. All there is, is Lord. All there is, is Brahman. That's what the Shandoga says. Sarum Khalvidam Brahma. All this is indeed, all that there is here is Brahman. All that is here is Ishvara. Whatever name you want to give, all the is Atma. All of this will be found in different places in Upanishads. Where somewhere it is said, all that there is is Brahman. All that there is is Ishvara. All that there is is Atma. All that there is is Sat or existence. All that there is is Chit or consciousness. All that there is Ananda. Therefore, this statement, Yatova Imani Bhutani Jayante, that from which all these beings ha are, are, have emerged, that by which they are all sustained, that by which they all resolve, <coughs> what is that? Upanishad answers later on. Ananda Dev Kalvimani Bhutani Jayante, Anandena Jatani Jivanti, Anandam Prayant Devisam Vishanti is from Ananda, the happiness, the wholeness, which others call love. We can call it love, Ananda, happiness, wholeness, from which everything has emerged, by which everything is sustained, under which everything is goes bad, and therefore, same Brahman also is called Ananda. Ananda means wholeness, completeness, totality. So this is what Brahma Sutra teaches us. This essence of the teaching of all the Upanishads. Athato Brahma Jignasa, the Jignasa, the Vichara upon Brahman is carried out with the help of the Upanishads. Upanishads Vakyas 
And therefore, every sutra has its vishaya, every, every adhikarana, I should say, has its vishaya. And this second sutra is also second adhikaran. The first sutra was first adhikaran topic. Second sutra is second adhikaran. So this topic is con consists of only one sutra. First topic, Janmadi, sec I mean, uh, the uh, Jignasa adhikaran. This is Janmadi adhikaran. To topic of Janmadi. And it is one sutra. And sometimes. A topic is one sutra, more than one sutra, several sutras. It's called Adhikaran. And that's how we'll see as we proceed further. So this is second sutra, Janma Adhyasyata. With that, we conclude our discussion. <coughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutau Vande Bhagavantau Punah Punah Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyoma Vadvyapta Dehaya Dakshinamutaye Namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Vidita Khila Shastra Sutha Jalate Mahito Banisha Kati Tarthanite Sadaye Kalaye Vimalam Charanam Bhava Shankar Deshika Mesharanam Bhava Shankar Deshika Mesharanam Bhava Shankar